COVID-19 vaccine distribution is underway in Maryland, and so far more than 20,000 people in the state have received their first doses. Joining us is Acting Deputy Health Secretary Dr. Jinlin Chan. Dr. Chan, how has Maryland's vaccination process been so far, and what's next for the distribution, and have you been vaccinated? Uh, thank you so much, and I uh, appreciate uh, you having me on. So um, Maryland began receiving its initial vaccinations on uh, during the week of December 14th, so just before the Christmas holidays. And so those began going to some of our hospitals, um, and as well as being allocated to CVS and Walgreens as part of the federal uh, long-term care partnership so that they could go out and begin vaccinating um, individuals who work. and live in our nursing homes who are among the most vulnerable in the state. Um, and so far from what we have heard, um, things have gone fairly smoothly um, at all of the different hospitals um, who have received vaccines. And at this point in time, all hospitals have received um, a you know, enough vaccine to cover the majority of the uh, staff that they have that are frontline workers. Um, and just last week, both CVS and Walgreens began vaccinations in the long term care facilities. So, Dr. Chan, we're a little bit behind um, nationwide. How is Maryland in our target goals right now? So I, I guess I don't know if I would uh, consider us behind per se. You know, as we began uh, receiving vaccines, we pushed it out to our uh, providers as quickly as we could. And I think what people may not uh, entirely appreciate is that this is a brand new vaccine, both of them and that there is an element of training to make sure that the people who are vaccinating um, others uh, know how to handle the vaccine appropriately so we don't waste doses um, and also provide the vaccine in as safe a uh, manner as possible. So there is an element of training and ramping up to establish these vaccine clinics. Um, and so, so there is a period of that and that plus the holidays uh, last week and even now, um, you know, has impacted uh, the ability to actually set up really large clinics. I, I think that that logistic aspect of it is something that people may not fully appreciate and understand. Dr. Chan, as you know, more people died due to COVID in Maryland in December since May. Do you attribute that to a post Thanksgiving surge? And if so, what are your concerns about post Christmas as we look ahead to the New Year's? And what's your advice for Marylanders as they bring in the new year? So, um, you know, we did see an increase um, in, of individuals who were hospitalized uh, in December um, in Maryland hospitals, as well as the number of people who unfortunately passed away and were not able to um, spend the holidays with their families. Um, and, you know, we actually expected a much larger um, post Thanksgiving surge. And so we are thankful that it did not um, pan out the way that we had initially anticipated. And I think that is very much due to to um, the work of Marylanders across the state um, who stayed home and who heeded the warnings. And the governor was very clear in his message pre-Christmas that it is all about home for the holidays. And what we saw was that, you know, compared to this time last year, a lot fewer Marylanders were traveling. For those who did choose to travel out of state, we encourage people to, when they come back home that they get tested before they come or immediately when they enter the state. And while they're waiting for a test result, they should quarantine so that um, they're not out in public, that they stay home. Um, and, you know, again, people who may have uh, big New Year's plans, we urge caution because we are still seeing um, hospitalizations across the state, particularly in the central region and capital region. And so uh, encourage people to continue practicing social distancing and wearing their masks when they're out in public. Dr. Chan, as you know, right now there's controversy surrounding the safety of restaurant dining. Baltimore City shut down both indoor and outdoor dining. Anne Arundel County is in court right now fighting to do the same thing. How do both indoor and outdoor dining play in spreading COVID-19? So whenever the uh, people are in enclosed spaces for a prolonged period of time, that really can, um, you know, you can have spread of infection. That's why we encourage social distancing and so that people don't gather um, in large groups. Um, that's really the primary reason that that is a key public health message and key advice that we continue to, to emphasize. Um, you know, for people who are outdoors and truly outdoors with, you know, 
increased ventilation, it's a lesser risk, but there still can be a risk, which is why, again, um, our message is that people should be wearing masks, even if outdoors, if they can't, um, uh, you know, be distant from other people, you know, with at least six feet. As we head into 2021, the wise words you want to leave with the people of Maryland. You know, this has been a tough year for all of us here in Maryland, um, you know, COVID-19 has uh, really impacted all of us in many, many different ways. And, you know, for over 5,000 families here in the state of Maryland, they are uh, living, you know, going into a new year without their loved ones. And so um, there is new hope with the vaccines that are coming. And I would urge patients for people uh, who are waiting for a vaccine and who want to get it, we are going to be getting it out to people as soon as we possibly can, starting with healthcare workers both in hospitals and in the community. And um, we're looking forward to uh, a very uh, hope in the new year. Yes, we are. Thank you very much, Dr. Chan, for joining us today.